In the tranquil suburbs of Delaware County, Pennsylvania, the lives of Jenaire and Mark Gerardo seem to mirror the idyllic setting. Professionally successful, socially accomplished, and by all appearances, living the American dream. However, their story took an unforeseen and tragic turn that would shatter the calm of their suburban existence. Jenaire, an accomplished woman in her own right, and Mark, a respected professional, harbored complexities beneath the surface of their seemingly perfect life. What began as a tale of success and love evolved into a narrative of betrayal and heartbreak. Jenaire Gerardo was born Jenaire Cox on December 19, 1970, in the city of Fort Wayne, Allen County, Indiana, USA. She grew up in the area until her late teenage years. She was a graduate of Bishop Lewis High School where she took advanced courses. Jenaire first attended Indiana University Purdue University at Indianapolis, where she studied communication and was deeply involved in the theater arts and performances program at the college. She also continued with her studies in communication at Butler University. Jenaire earned her BA degree in communication and theater arts. Throughout her life, she held several jobs related to marketing for several companies in the Indiana area. She worked in the city of Carmel and also Indianapolis and was the marketing manager at Circor Instrumentation for several years. In the summer of 1986, Jenaire Cox met Mark Gerardo for the first time in Fort Wayne, Indiana. They were both teenagers at the time and Jenaire worked at a Taco Bell in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Mark said he was immediately attracted to her from the moment they met and commented on how beautiful blue eyes and big smile had taken his breath away. He couldn't speak, he was kind of tongue-tied. Their romance didn't begin until four years later, after Mark ran into Jenaire again and found out that she was by then working at a nearby mall. He started visiting her often, and one day he said she pressed him to make a move, asking him when he was going to take her out. She said, Are you going to ask me out, or what? He said, I was quite shy. It was this honesty that drew Mark to Jenaire. Mark said that Jenaire was confident and unafraid to speak her mind, adding that her demeanor was the exact opposite of me. Melissa Murphy, a childhood friend of Jenaire, said she remembered when Jenaire met Mark. She said, This is the one and was so excited to an extent she could do anything for Mark. On October 23, 1993, Mark and Jenaire got married. Mark was 25 years, and Jenaire was 23 years at the time, and together they cemented a relationship that began in adolescence and carried them into adulthood. Mark said, We were happy. I couldn't imagine not being with Jenaire for the rest of my life. Just as with any other relationship, Mark and his partner Jenna had to deal with low points in their marriage. He said that his arguments with his wife could be epic and that she would always win because she was always going to have the last word. One of Mark's high school friends, Mike Hartman, said, I wasn't privy to all the behind the scene of their relationship and their life together, but I know there were intense disagreements, intense to things. The couple maintained a strong marriage, but when the financial crisis struck in 2008, Mark would later be quoted saying that changed everything for us. Money had often been a concern and a source of stress for the couple, whereby both of them would often find that it was the main source of many of their arguments. In November 2011, they both moved to Greenville, South Carolina, where they both found new jobs in marketing. With the new environment and frequent exploring the state's beautiful mountains and beaches, Mark said they experienced a little bit of restoration for their marriage, which had brought them much closer than before. Everything was going on well for the next few years until 2017, when their renewed life in South Carolina came to a halt. Jenaire had been laid off from her job and was having difficulty getting a new one. She lost confidence in herself and was becoming much less strong than the woman she had once been. It was around this time that the couple decided once again that it was time to search for new opportunities and a new beginning elsewhere. Finally, the couple decided that Delaware would be their new home, and immediately Mark began his search for a job opportunity. He saw that the University of Delaware was hiring a creative director in its marketing department, and if successful, he would be the supervisor. He sent an email applying for the role and received an instant message back from a lady 15 years his junior who would be his new boss, offering him an interview. His concerns that a woman 15 years his junior would be managing him subsided almost immediately. This marked the beginning of Mark Gerardo's first encounter with Meredith Chapman. Meredith Chapman was a native of Pennsylvania and was 33 years old at the time. 
She was a graduate of the University of Delaware with a bachelor's degree in communication and a master's degree in education. Meredith was also married to a man by the name of Luke, a former Newark City Councilman. The couple had married in 2009 and lived in Fairfield Crest, Delaware with their dog Indy. When Mark attended his interview, he found that he was immediately attracted to Meredith, not only her beauty, but also her pure brilliance, saying, when I sat across the desk from her, within five minutes, I didn't say it out loud, but I said, I've to work for this person. He further said, she was so articulate and so energetic and passionate about the job and accomplished at her age to be in the position that she was in, I was dumbfounded. It appeared like Meredith was impressed by Mark because she immediately offered him the job, to which Mark gratefully accepted an offer for the position and moved to Wilmington, Delaware in November 2017, while his wife stayed behind in South Carolina temporarily to lease their home. Mark was excited not only because of moving to North, but also to see growth in his career, not knowing that this would be the beginning of the end of his marriage with Jen Eyre. Mark spent his 45 days living alone in Delaware, as his wife remained behind to arrange for their home to be rented out. During that time, Mark said he got to know Meredith well, and also stated that the two had a lot in common, and that one day she had asked him out for a drink. Remembering the events of the night, Mark said it was easy to talk to Meredith, and before they had gone home, he spoke to her about his marriage to Jen Eyre, even if it was not necessarily in a negative way, and also told Meredith about losing his parents and his brother. Mark didn't know what was transpiring, stating I really didn't know what was happening, he went on to say. I knew it felt amazing to be around Meredith, and I was confused by the feelings I was having, to be honest, until it became a little bit more forward with a dinner that we had. It was more of a date. Mark said the issues with his marriage also came into focus when he was with Meredith. It was during this time Mark started comparing Meredith to that of his wife, stating how Meredith started to tell him that he was good at what he does, and how wonderful a man he was, something he said he had never heard from his wife's lips. Mark was hopelessly in love, stating, that just made an impression on me. Here's this woman I think is amazing, saying that she thinks I'm a wonderful man. One month after meeting Meredith, Mark said that the two kissed for the first time. He further said that while the energy was there, he immediately felt awful for betraying his wife and told Meredith that whatever was about to happen couldn't be because he cared for his wife. Nonetheless, he soon realized that he also couldn't give up on the feelings he was developing for Meredith, who he said had told him she was nine years into an unhappy marriage herself. Mark said, I felt enthralled. It was such a connection. To shut it down just didn't feel right. I had to at least find out what it was that drew us together. Before Jen Eyre had joined her husband in Delaware, her husband and Meredith had already expressed their love for each other, with Mark saying, it felt right to tell Meredith that he loved her and that it was a very powerful feeling. In December 2017, Jen Eyre moved north and Mark said she could sense he was distant and it wasn't long before she confronted him about her feeling that there could be another woman. Mark said, she finally asked me, what is up with you? You're acting different, he continued. She said specifically, it's Meredith, isn't it? This was after Mark had mentioned Meredith several times when speaking about his new job. Although her husband denied the affair at first, Jen Eyre would not let it go. She continued to question his relationship with Meredith. Aware that there was something between the two, Jen Eyre began to pay attention to her husband, making sure she knew what he was up to at any given time. He further said that Jen Eyre mysteriously knew things about him and Meredith and that he couldn't understand how she knew them. Close to February 14, 2018, Valentine's Day, Jen Eyre finally got the proof she had been looking for. However, Mark's admission of an affair with Meredith came at the cost of Jen Eyre who admitted to him that she had hired a company to gain access to his phone, permitting her to read his text messages and also view his photos and records of calls he had exchanged with Meredith. Mark admitted the truth to Jen Eyre that he had indeed fallen for Meredith because he knew he could not keep up with the lie any longer. Heartbroken and refusing to give up on her husband, Jen Eyre asked Mark to attend a marriage counselling, which he agreed to attend, but on the day of their second session, Mark said he was putting on his jacket when he felt something bulging in the lining of his coat. Even though at first he believed it to be an anti-theft device that had been left inside, he decided to cut the jacket open and discovered a recording device, and with its lights already flashing, it was recording him at that very moment. At that particular time, Mark was very furious and went ahead and confronted his wife. 
In response to his wife, Mark said, She told me she wanted to understand the degree to which Meredith and I were in the relationship. She was determined there was a plan between Meredith and I, and she was trying to listen to what that plan was. From then on, the relationship between Mark and Meredith would fall apart at an accelerated rate. Finally, Mark told Jenner that he planned on filing for divorce in May of 2018, after he had met Delaware residency requirements and could move out of their shared house. During this time, things were going well, particularly for Meredith Chapman, who had been offered a new job as the assistant vice president at Villanova University in Pennsylvania and moved to Radnor Township, Pennsylvania, which is part of the mainline region. Meredith and her husband were getting divorced as well so that she could continue to follow her new relationship with Mark and could, in the end, be together. As Meredith and Mark's relationship continued to grow, Jenner started to see divorce coach Sheila Brennan, who said Jenner had a lot of bitterness and anger about being tossed away and being traded in for a younger woman and that her client had a lot of fears about being left financially, since she had just moved north and had not found a new job one year after losing the previous one. Things seemed to go from bad to worse for Jenner, and finally, all this had destroyed her mental health. Mark recommended that she see a psychiatrist and also asked her to seek support from family and friends since she had even threatened to jump out of the window. Mark said she took the advice and that she seemed to have accepted the forthcoming divorce. Jenner approached her husband one day with a list of requests for the weeks leading up to him officially moving out. Mark said he believed that they had gotten through the worst things, but little did he know that this was far from the truth, and the worst was yet to come. Among the items on her list were going on hikes, having dinner and generally spending some time together. Mark agreed to play along with Jenea's requests, stating, It was odd, but I'm trying to land this thing so she is in a good place. If this is what she needed, then I was going to do that. Mark said his wife was acting normal for the most part, although she would occasionally break down and cry over the next few weeks. Jenea also began posting on the neighborhood app next door asking for recommendations for an excellent marriage counselor for couple on brink of divorce. She went on, writing, We will need someone who is very educated and experienced dealing with couples' issues including infidelity, depression, traumatic experiences, child-parents dynamics, being accountable for actions. However, in secret, she had been planning revenge. On the night of April 23, 2018, Mark and Jenner were supposed to meet for dinner to discuss the divorce agreement. But in a series of messages, Jenner informed her husband, who was already at the restaurant where they were meant to meet, that she was running late before sending another text telling him to go home, she wouldn't make it. As Mark got up to leave minutes later, he received a picture from Jenner. She sent him a picture of trash with a condom in the middle, which made him believe she was searching through Meredith's trash can outside her home then received more text messages, one of which read, You ruined my life. The next two messages that Jenner sent Mark read, I hope you find never happiness. And another read, Bye Mark. Mark tried to text and call Meredith multiple times, fearing for her safety and afraid of what Jenner might do to her. Unfortunately, all forms of communication went unanswered. He rushed to Meredith's house, expecting to find a fight between Jenner and Meredith. But when he arrived, he found something worse than he could ever thought. He found Meredith face down on her kitchen floor with a pool of blood forming around her head. Nearby, he found his wife's body also lying on the floor. Mark stated, It took five seconds and I screamed an obscenity and ran to her. He continued, I just said, Baby! Oh baby, what have you done? Meredith had gushed on her Instagram account about her position at Villanova just less than two hours before her death, writing that she couldn't be more excited. Just a week on the job, and I'm already feeling the love from Dutch Nova Nation New Adventures, she posted at 5.42pm. Later that evening, she arrived at her home on Lowry Lane in Radnor Township, parked her Audi in the driveway, opened the door, and walked straight inside, completely unaware of the fact that Jenner had broken in and was hiding, waiting to attack her. When Mark arrived, Tim Mulvey, one of Meredith's neighbours, was there, and he said that he heard the commotion and that he went out to see what had transpired and Mark told him to call 911. Sergeant Christopher Four of the Radnor Township Police Department said that the call made his heart sink. He stated, We don't really receive those types of calls, he continued. When we arrived at the scene, it was kind of chaotic. There were a lot of officers there. Mark, 
who seemed to be heavily breathing according to Christopher Flanagan, was placed into the back of an ambulance before he was brought to the police station as a suspect. After interrogating him and finding that the gun used in the two deaths was underneath Jenner's body, the police determined that she had broken into Meredith's home before murdering her and then killing herself. One day after the murder, Suicide Police received a tip from a person who said had seen a woman in a trench coat, hat, sunglasses and possible wig looking out at the house with binoculars. Police had also collected a set of car keys from the crime scene which they determined belonged to a Cadillac that Jenner had rented. Mark said learning about the Cadillac came as a surprise. He said he found all this mostly from the police and from the news. She had rented it two weeks before the tragedy and it was parked right outside their apartment. Mark continued to dig. He poured over his wife's bank statements, phone records and her computer backup and found out that she was living a double life. After Mark admitted to the affair just after Valentine's Day, he said, Jenner opened up a secret bank account and credit cards where she used the credit cards to purchase the audio surveillance equipment as well as a lock picking kit, computer hacking software and DNA testing kits for his clothes. Mark also said she even bought sophisticated GPS tracking systems and attached them to both Mark and Meredith's car. Mark said, I think there were over 400 images of private conversations that Meredith and I had through text and Snapchat, and she would actually, in the middle of the night, get access to my phone, Mark continued. My best guess as to how she gained access. I was sleeping on the couch. She'd put my thumb onto the thumb reader. On March 20th, 2018, Five weeks before committing the murder, Jenner bought the gun that she used in the murder-suicide. Mark said that her credit card statements revealed she had practiced shooting the gun three times at a firing range. Mark said Jenner had planted multiple devices in his clothes and that he found files containing hundreds of hours of audio that his wife had recorded and even transcribed the audio into notebooks. He continued, she took all my jackets and had a multitude of devices that she was cycling in and out and that every day she would take it back out and then sew it back in, download it and back and forth. She had done that for weeks. It came to light that on the night Jenner killed Meredith and herself, she emailed a letter to members of her family explaining her motive to a very chilling degree. She had started the letter weeks before and she dated her entries and also wrote of how this was a payback for what he had done to her, quoting, That's as simple as it gets. Dr. Robbie Ludwig, a psychotherapist who studied homicide within marriages and read Jenner's letter, suggested that Jenner may have been pushed to kill Meredith and herself because losing the love of her life was something she could not tolerate. Dr. Robin went on to state, In my opinion, there was something about listening to the tapes that triggered rage and wound her up, Dr. Robin continued. It gave her courage to know that she was right that he was bad. I think at some point when she gave up on life and became suicidal, that's when she became her most dangerous. I get sense that all of this was done to make him suffer. She was interested in being the judge and jury in this scenario of her own life and her husband's life. In a televised TV interview with presenter Dr. Oz Mark revealed how his wife left a 15-page letter stating how she would have killed him too had he walked in on the crime. In the years since the event, Mark said he wishes he handled the breakup with his wife differently. He further said, I broke her heart and more than anything, out of all this, my regret comes back to breaking her heart and making her feel like she had no other choice. I wish I wouldn't have hurt her because I loved her, I still love her, I wish I could take it back. Mark said he has driven past Meredith's home several times as a way of trying to move forward and by doing so has helped him come to terms with what happened so that he can let it go. The shockwaves of this story echoed through the neighbourhood, leaving friends and neighbours grappling with the aftermath of a narrative that transcended the boundaries of typical suburban life. In the aftermath, the community came together, seeking solace and understanding, and grappling with the questions that lingered in the wake of this complex and heartbreaking tale. The Gerardo story serves as a stark reminder that human relationships are complex, and the consequences of betrayal can ripple through lives in unexpected ways. May it prompt conversations about mental health, the importance of seeking help, and the significance of fostering understanding in our communities. If you found this video compelling, leave a like, and your thoughts in the comments, be sure to subscribe and check out our other videos.